So today I'm going to be doing a problem from the 2007 AP Calculus test, and it's question number four. And this question says, a particle moves along the x-axis with position at time t given by x of t equals e to the negative t times sine t for a time between 0 and 2 pi. So part A asks us to find time t at which the particle is furthest to the left and we need to justify our answer. So in order to do this, we're going to have to find the derivative of the function given in the introduction. So let's start by doing that. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So we'll find the derivative of e to the negative t, which is negative e to the negative t, and multiply it by sine t, plus e to the negative t times the derivative of sine t, which is cosine t. And since both values, or both parts of this equation have e to the negative t, we can actually simplify this to, oops, negative, or actually, e to the negative t times negative sine t plus cosine t, which in go to e to the negative t cosine t minus sine t. So now that we know the derivative function, we're going to set that equal to zero because we need to find the critical numbers to go back and plug in to find the absolute minimum. So to the negative t times cosine t minus sine t equals zero. So we know that we can put e to the negative t equal to zero and then this part inside the parentheses equal to zero. e to the negative t equal to zero. When we solve that, we get that t equals zero. And then here, we can go cosine t is equal to sine t by just adding sine t to both sides. And this makes it easier so we can find at what value of t, sine and cosine are equal using the unit circle. And we know that those values are when t equals pi over four, or when t equals five pi over four. So now that we have our critical values, we can go ahead and plug those back into the original function up here, along with our um, end point, so that we can find the absolute minimum, which will then give us the point at which it is furthest to the left. So we're gonna take x of zero, so if we e to the negative zero times sine, of zero, and when you plug that into your calculator, you find that that is equal to zero. X of pi over four, so e to the negative pi over four times sine of pi over four, and if you plug that in, you get 0 0.322. X to the x of five pi over four, and then when we plug these in, we get negative 0 0.0139. And then we need to plug in the last value, 2 pi, which we can't forget because that's going to be the end of the range of values. So we'll go ahead and do that. And when you plug that in, that ends up being zero. So now we're going to go ahead and find the lowest value that we get when we plug in our critical numbers and endpoints. And that's going to be at 5 pi over 4, because as we can see, that's a negative value. So that indicates that it will be furthest to the left. So our final answer is the particle is furthest left. at t equals 0 
equals 5 pi over 4. And that's how you solve part A of this problem. So, on to part B. Part B asks us to find the value of a constant A for which x of t satisfies the given equation and has the same through the same time interval given in the introduction. So in order to do this, we're going to have to find the first derivative along with the second derivative as our first step. So luckily in part A, we found the first derivative, so I'm just going to copy that down so we have it for future reference. So now let's use this and find the second derivative. So we're going to use the product rule again. So we'll find the derivative of e to the negative t, which is negative e to the negative t, and multiply that by cosine t minus sine t. And then we'll add the original so negative e to the t times the derivative of cosine t minus sine t, which we know is negative sine t minus cosine t. So let's simplify this equation a little bit. So we can, let's distribute, neg we'll distribute negative e to the negative t to these two, and we'll distribute this here because that'll make it easier to simplify. So negative e to the negative t times cosine t plus e to the negative t sine t So now we can go ahead and simplify some of these. So we have negative e to the negative t times cosine t, and then we have minus e to the negative t cosine t. So we have negative 2e to the negative t cosine t. And these are going to cancel out since it's e to the negative t sine t minus e to the negative t sine t. So our final answer for the second derivative is negative 2e to the negative t cosine t. So now that we have the second derivative and the first derivative, we can take those and plug it into the equation that was given, which was a times x double prime of t plus x prime of t plus x of t equals to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in all the equations that we now have and try to solve for a. So a times negative 2e to the negative t cosine t plus e to the negative t cosine t minus sine t plus e to the negative t sine t equals 0. So let's try to simplify this equation a little bit more by distributing e to the negative t across to cosine t and negative sine t. Okay, so now we see that we have negative e to the t, negative e to the negative t sine t and e to the negative t sine t, and we know that those will just end up canceling out, and we're left with a t times negative 2 e to the negative t cosine t plus e to the negative t cosine t equals Zero. Um, let's go ahead and move e to the negative t cosine t onto the other side of the equation so that we can set get a all by itself. Okay. 
and we'll, div we'll divide by negative 2e to the negative t, cosine t. We'll divide both sides. And that gives us negative e to the negative t, cosine t, all over negative 2e to the negative t, cosine t. And as we can see, we have e to the negative t, cosine t, on the top and the bottom. So those will end up canceling out. And that will give us a is equal to 1 half which is our final answer for part B of this question.